Hi everybody, I'm Moom and welcome to Moomdas Life Fan Made and I'm very excited to welcome you all to Useful DIY Challenge July 2020. I want to thank Michelle from Michelle's Cozy Home for hosting this month's challenge along with me. I'll put link to her channel in the description box of this video. I want to thank each and every participant to this video. So there is a playlist where you can add your videos and watch all the videos of this month's challenge. The link is in the description box of this video. And if you have any problem adding your video to the playlist, just contact me or Michelle and we will help you add your videos to the playlist. I want to thank each and every viewer who has come to this challenge, to each and every video of this challenge. You make this place special. This challenge is special because it comes with lots of ideas and these are very useful ideas. If you are new to my channel, I love to do a lot and lot of DIYs and everything within budget. Pick up something very ordinary and turn it into something beautiful and useful. And if you love the content of my channel, I would really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel by hitting the red subscribe button given below and do hit that bell icon twice so that you're notified each time I post my video. This month's challenge theme is to make something useful for our home that we can use. So the playlist is full of wonderful ideas that we can use in our homes and I'm really looking forward to see, get more ideas that I can use in my home. Today I'm sharing with you two DIYs. They might not look super glamorous or super decorative but they are very useful DIYs and I am actually I am using them in my home and they look nice too. I hope you will enjoy this video too. Let me know in the comment section below how you liked my today's DIYs. Now for making my clothes pin or clothes peg bag I have cut short my hard work. I've taken an old trouser of my husband which I have discarded and I decided to cut a piece out of it. You can take denim trousers or any trousers which is in thick material. I have cut about a foot along of the trouser with the from the lower part so that I have this folded seam on the lower part. It's still stretched on the sides that saves me a lot of extra effort and another key important thing that I need is a clasp. Now one can use a hanger for this. I've seen so many uh, images on the internet which uses hanger but I couldn't find a small hanger and I didn't want a very big bag. So I found this clasp. So one can find these kinds of clasps with bags or craft section or even with the eye card holders for different conferences and all. So this is a clasp which can e either hang, this can rotate. So this can hang anywhere on the wall or on the clothes line. I love hanging my clothes, drying my clothes out in the sun. They give a beautiful smell that way. So this clasp will easily hang on to any clothes line that I want to take this to or it can hang easily on any hook or a nail on the wall or a door. To begin, this portion which is already folded and stitched is going to be the top portion and this open part will be the lower part which I will close and I'll close this in the last when I've done everything else. Now for every step that I use for stitching one can even use fabric glue. So let not uh, the idea that it's a stitching thing uh, scare you in any way. Now usually this is how a trouser is folded with the creases on this side and the stitch line in the center. Now what I did was I got the stitch lines on the sides and I have ironed it so as to try to flatten these creases as far as possible. Now I am taking the one which is the neatest has the least folds as the front side. And I've taken a lid, lid which can allow my hand to go in. That is the total width. Now I place it about an inch below the stitch line of this folded end, the lower edge of the trouser, this folded side. I'm placing this about an inch in the center. And I'm going to mark it rather one and a half inch below 
say about this much below and mark it with the fabric chalk now and also mark a circle slightly bigger than this all around it now with the sharp pair of scissors i'm going to cut the inner circle out make sure that you don't cut anything else Now that the inner circle is out, I can easily put my hand through it. I'm going to make slits from the inner circle towards the outer circle. They are about a centimeter or a finger width apart. So all around the circumference because this edge might fray. So if you're using uh, something like denim, you can omit this step. So what I will do is I'm going to stitch these inside. So that this becomes a neat edge. One can hand stitch it or machine stitch it. So first thing, I'll make slits till the outer edge. Now I'm folding all this cut slits of fabric inside and I'm adding pins on them. Now this whole thing, the raw edges are inside. I'll go to my sewing machine and stitch a circle around this so it's neat one can just glue them inside if you don't want to stitch it now i have stitched all around this edge so that it's neat and i can easily put my hand in it's big enough for that for taking pins out now while i was at the sewing machine i also uh, stitched three lines of straight stitch just across like this this is going to be the clothes line for my pattern design well some decor is always nice then I took some uh, scrap pieces of fabric that I had and I cut out this tiny dresses cute ones and I'm going to glue them no stitching here honestly can't do that much so I'm going to glue this using some fabric glue and uh, wait till all this dries up Next, I am just taking some contrasting thread, double thread and making a chain stitch or a daisy stitch which would look like a clothes pin. So I am coming out from the fabric, making a loop and going near the same point where I came out taking a long way and then pulling the loop around the needle and pulling it out going in out of the loop inside so this way the clothes pin is here and my dress is hanging on the wire now this is dry and done and I'm going to turn it inside out. It's easy now with this circular hole in. So now once inside out, I'll go to my sewing machine and stitch the bottom here along this edge so that it becomes a bag. I've stitched the bottom side, turn again so as to get the right side out and neaten the corners I have to close the top side now before that I need to attach this clasp here so I've taken a 3 inch long ribbon satin ribbon and I'm placing this clasp inside the ribbon with the shiny side out and making a loop and I'm 
placing this loop in the center like this between the two sides back and the front and I am fixing it with a pin. Now again I will stitch around this edge. I can stitch it on the front side because it's easier and the top portion because it's folded it's already neat and will not fray so I can just stitch on top of this. Now this is ready almost ready this part I have already stitched now just because this is a thick trouser fabric it's holding its shape well but for the long run to make sure that it still holds its shape I'm going to reach this corner now as this was the end side of the trouser and it's already folded in I'm going to make a small nick here making sure that the nick is only in the lower area now here's a small hole in and now I'll take a dowel and I'll measure the length of the dowel slightly smaller than this and I'll insert it through this and it will stay inside this tube and thus it will maintain the shape well. I need not stitch it because it will not come out and if I want to wash it I can take it out from the same loop and I can wash it in a washing machine. It's ready. Now for the number of uh, clothes pin that I keep outside on the regular basis this size is perfect if you keep a lot you can take a bigger bag make a bigger bag or you can even ship this whole little higher I think this is both cute and useful and I'm going to cherish this for a long time let me know what you think of this Now this is a piece of scrap wood, it's basically compact wood, you can see some particulate things here and it has been covered both sides uh, with something like vinyl or sun mica kind of thing and it's in this neutral wood color. So I'm using this piece of wood and the width is exactly what will fit inside single frame of my windows. So now to make this edges smooth and, and neaten them up. I'm using some wood filler so now some places you get them in paste here I get them like powder and as per the instructions I need to add some wood glue and little water to make a smooth paste not too runny now once I get this smooth paste I'm going to add it to this portion so that this would become neat enough it will become smooth like the rest of the wood and I can sand it off and it will be ready to paint otherwise the surface is rough so I'm using a spatula you can use anything which is flat or even the tip of your finger to add this I shall do this on all the raw edges of this wooden piece. Now this wood filler has dried and luckily this uh, dried wood filler matches the color of both the pieces matches so well that I don't want to spoil the shade at all. Now I'm just going to take a little piece of sandpaper and sand off this excess of uh, wood filler that is overhanging here. So once this is done I'll just wipe it clean and it's ready to go. At this point anybody who prefers to add some colors can add colors to this maybe stripes like crane stripes or maybe color block using white gold or whatever you prefer. The other item I need for this DIY is some jute rope. One can even use macrame rope or t-shirt yarn or anything yarn that you want to use. So from the strands, these are all six feet long strands, two bunches of six strands each, six strands and uh, six strands of jute rope. So I'm going to start with one side and repeat the same process in the other. 
so these are a six feet long each of them so I'm going to make sure that all the strands are at uh, starting at the equal length so that I uh, when I trim off later there is less wastage so once that is done I just hold the two sides together like this two ends together and make a single loop so that I know what is the midpoint now this is my midpoint and I want to start by making a loop first but if I make a loop like this there would be these loose strands so a little away so this much would be my loop so I'm going to start at this point I'll keep some weight here or one can even add a tape and fix it to the surface now since there are six strands here I can divide them into two into two uh, two two and two groups and make a braid so I'm just bringing the outside strand over the middle strand Again the outside strand over the middle strand, once from the left, another from the right and that's, that's just how you make uh, braids or plates. So once the desired length is reached, I remove the weight, bring it together and now here from where the braids end and again it becomes loose strand I'm going to tie a knot here just simple as that now I have again 6 plus 6 12 strands and I'm going to mix them together and take 6 strands on to either sides Again, I'm going to braid them. Two strands, three bunches, from once from right, another from left. Bring the outside one inside over the middle one, and that's how one braids. And I'll go on doing this. The only thing I'll make sure that everything goes flat it's lying flat and not a twisted braid that will not look nice here now this is the jute strings that I made in the previous steps with two loops two strings on each side and I'm ready to hang this what I'll do is I'll use two strings the two looped strings on each side and I'll just this is the excess uh, ones I haven't cut them because I'll see how much height I need and I'll go below this and and the bottom I'm going to just make a knot together I'll just knot them together this is the corner of my living room where you have very often watched me doing my introduction to the videos and here is a round a shaped cylindrical shaped uh, storage container which I use as this corner table I placed a lace mat here and I have this greens here over a wooden slice and I love this section because of the bohemian look that it has because uh, also I have this beautiful uh, flowers filled of botanical scroll that I made sometime back in one of the videos you'll find in the iPad and decor section and I love this corner because of the bohemian look but as you see, I like to keep this section with a curtain slightly drawn because this is the portion in my home which gets maximum natural light and I can keep a few plants here. So I thought of adding another shelf here. If I add another shelf here which can hang from the curtain rods, then I can have more space to add more flower, uh, plants here. Now here are the loops that have touched on the curtain rods and coming down the two uh, plates that I made with three 
strings each and I have tied two knots here and uh, my wood shelf would hang the way my hand is here. Now here is how my shelf has come here. So I could declutter this space and now there are plants on two levels. I'm sorry the lighting is getting worse when I'm trying to face it because of the light coming from outside. But uh, here is how it is and I think it's beautiful. It even acts as a curtain and gives me some privacy from the outside. And it is hanging pretty on this shelf. I think it's just perfect, something that I was wanting to do for a long time.